Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Jameis Winston's Buccaneers going up against Breeze's Saints. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you. We are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this game, <laughs> and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does... I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Tampa Bay taking the field and a look at Jameis Winston. Uh, Jameis, after leaving the game with a shoulder injury last week, he bounced back in a big way, put up really remarkable stats, unfortunately, in a three-point loss to the Bills. Showed a lot of toughness, a lot of character, because he really couldn't practice much during the week. So he had to stay with it mentally, have himself ready to go, and it was his throwing shoulder that he hurt. So he really had to grit it out. So close to getting the job done in Buffalo, Yet the Buccaneers are 2-4 and four now. They'll need some big performances from him going forward. And they've lost three straight games, Charles, by five points or less. Now the first carry for Doug Martin. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And we get a glance now at the Buccaneer offense. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers continue to improve on offense. Their ranks in 2016 will put them about the middle of the NFL, but they're starting to create a nice identity. A young and growing offensive line led by a quarterback, Jameis Winston, who's truly a playmaker, especially when he throws the ball deep to Mike Evans. Winston gives to Martin on the draw. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. And here now, New Orleans defensive unit. When you're drafted 12th overall, people expect big things out of you, and Sheldon Rankins can provide that. Big, strong, physical player, has excellent quickness, and is really good with his hands, keeping blockers off of him and allowing him to get upfield and into opposing backfields. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And this is going to be incomplete. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Now the six-year man from Cal, Brian Anger, on to kick. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. We'll get a peek here in a second of the New Orleans Saints offense led by Drew Brees. And they're 4-2 now, so everyone was talking about the Falcons in the NFC South. Well, maybe the Saints can challenge the Falcons. I think that there's no doubt about it right now. They're the favorite to me in the NFC South. Remember, they won at Carolina, so they have that little small tiebreaker already. They've got Chicago coming up and then Tampa Bay. And so they're about to make some noise. Defense has been fueling this four-game run that they're on, but Drew Brees, still the face of the franchise, the guy I call AI <laughs> for artificial intelligence. Whatever situation comes up, he learns from it, adapts, adjusts, 
and comes out even better. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Give him six on the play, and that'll make it second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. On second down, here's Breeze. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And a look now at the offense for New Orleans. Michael Thomas emerged from Ohio State as a mature route runner and a guy with tremendous ball skills downfield. But as one veteran New Orleans Saints player told me last year, his best attribute, he cares so much about the game and is all about winning. No matter what they need him to do on the field, he's willing to go get it done. Now the rookie out of Tennessee. This is Alvin Kamara. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. Well, plenty of credit has to go to the guy carrying the ball. He broke the tackle and gained the yardage. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the defender's bad. They're not going to make 100% of the tackles all the time. Even the best in the game will miss one occasionally. The key is not to let it snowball and miss tackle after tackle. On that play, credit to the offense, but that doesn't make the defense bad. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Now Breeze. And incomplete there, almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. And a quick look at the Buccaneer defensive starters. Brendan Hargraves has drafted out of Florida to be a starting corner by Tampa Bay. And they believe not in just his physical abilities, but also his confidence. And that proved to be true in his rookie year. Didn't give up much space to some of the elite wide receivers in the NFL. Made plenty of plays on the football downfield and showed the ability to recover if ever beaten on a route. On second down, Ingram. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Shotgun now for Breeze. And that is incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Go. 
So out come the Bucks now. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like in the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit jumpy. You do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. They start the drive with Martin. Gets around him. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Winston now from the 50. He's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Play fake here on first down. Finding room to the 20. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. 12 more yards there and another first down. On draft night, I kept wondering, why is O.J. Howard still on the board? And he ended out at Tampa at number 19. And they're ecstatic to have this guy who ran 4-5-1. Actually, the first time that the Bucs have ever drafted a tight end in round number one. And they got a good one. out here's the run with Martin and now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine give him 10 yards on the pickup and that'll make it second and a foot or so not an ideal spot to be on first down but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say okay we've got to throw it in order to pick it up stayed with the run was rewarded with a big time pickup now they're in second and manageable Second down throw for Winston. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Defense showing blitz. Throwing Winston. Trying to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Second down now after the incompletion. Now Winston. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Mike Evans from four yards out. And the Bucs have taken a first quarter lead. 
Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. So that drives seven plays in length, and it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. As we get a look at the New Orleans offensive starters, you had them this last week. School me on this revamped run game they have. Well, they've had to cut down the rotation. It started with three guys. Remember Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara, and of course Adrian Peterson. And the first couple of games, just 60 and 81 yards on the ground in those games. Since then, though, they've won four straight, at least 149 yards on the, on the ground in three of them. But in the last two games since they traded Adrian Peterson, 351 yards, three touchdowns, and they've caught 17 passes for 103 yards. They're getting the ball to the right guys, and they're making plays. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram, and he'll find some space up to about the 25. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. Breeze to throw on second down. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. When you and I did the weekly commentary updates last year, it seemed like we always used to talk about Michael Thomas week after week. And it piled up. 92 catches on the season, but the thing that really struck me was doing a New Orleans game and talking with a few of his teammates who talked about how much the game meant to him, and he was upset with guys he didn't think cared about the game enough. Unusual for a rookie, but it's a good sign for him. First down, Breeze. Setting up the receiver screen here to Thomas. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. Breeze hands to Ingram. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. They stay on the ground. This time it's Kamara. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down.
And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. From the gun, it's Breeze. And it's caught, Kobe Flaner. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Give him nine there on the first down completion. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Breeze now on first down. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. A gain of six there on first. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And he'll fall forward to the 29-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. But when you go from second to four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. The Saints on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. Here it's third and three. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the left hash, this from 46. And this one is right down Broadway. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Play action here on first down. Jackson's got it over the middle. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? 
They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Bucks in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. They've got it second and six to start things out. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off here the 32. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head. Drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what results? Interceptions. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Partner, when I see William Golston at 6'6", 280, that frame reminds me of an elite pass rusher. But the best part of his game, actually, is run defense. And that's what led them to signing him to a five-year, $27.5 million contract back in March. They go play action for Ingram. Now Breeze. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Give him three on the play. And that'll lead here to a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. To throw, it's Breeze. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Robert Ayers coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing. The O-line coach will. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So after the pick, they can't capitalize for six, but they do get three. And I know in this situation, most of us want to focus on the offense. You know what side of the ball I played on. Let's give that defense a lot of credit. Taking it over in a sudden change situation and shutting them down.
Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And we turn our focus to Doug Martin. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going, but we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to have time to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series so those surface tablets come into play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. Here's Martin as they begin on the ground. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Again, it's Martin. He takes this for three to the 29. screen pass that's complete call it a gain of seven and it gets him a new set of downs let's give a little credit there the offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense and it worked very well there for a first down Winston gives to the tailback, Martin. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Second down, Winston. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And it'll bring up third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Winston from the gun on third down. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force him into a likely punting situation. Here's Brian Anger now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And 
have we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore or they get tired or they get out of position or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Breeze now. It's complete. Flaner right side. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Now Breeze throwing on second down. And incomplete on the deep ball. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Ginn. And now it's third down. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because, like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. Now Breeze on third down. intercepted picked off by Brent Grimes and his guys are going to take over at the 31 yard line you're looking there at a defensive back who's maybe a step slower than he was when he came into the league a decade ago I know I question his speed coming into the game but what he's lost in speed he's more than made up for it with intellect and that's a great job of knowing how to position himself to make that interception Doug Martin now gearing up to go again here on offense. And the good news, his team's winning. The bad news, he hasn't had the game that he's hoped to, at least to this point here in the second quarter. And a lot of that is pride because these types of backs want to be in the center of all the action and leading their team to victory. They'll take the win right now, hoping to jump his game up as this one moves on. And he probably wants a little bit more of the spotlight going forward. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Following the interception, Winston. Over the middle complete, it's Jackson. Had a nice move, but can't break away. Down just inside the 30. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Second down, Martin. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And this is going to be incomplete. Patrick Murray now on for the field goal. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. Get 
to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. Partner, I think they saw something there. I mean, they came from the right side deliberately, and you know there's always a designated guy who goes and blocks it, but it's the rest of his teammates that get him free. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A really good pickup of 28 yards. So they're on that play. Offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend there? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Ingram again. And he will lose yardage back to the 34 yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to bring up a third down. Gerald McCoy is so slippery and elusive in the interior of the defense. I don't care who has the assignment to block him. It usually ends up having to take at least two, and most of the time, that's not enough either. Witness that tackle for a loss. The Saints on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. Shotgun now for Breeze. And he's got Sneed. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Breeze finding Sneed there for a Saint first down. Saints were the best team in the NFL on third down last year. 49% conversion rate helps when you have Drew Brees back there. It certainly does because he is just so analytical in everything he does. Goes through every progression on every snap in practice. So not much surprises in my game day. Tenth carry here for Mark Ingram. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Another 10 yards on that one, and another first down. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, 
because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. to the running game. It's Ingram. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to see. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. The Saints on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This time it's third and three. And looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. False start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. There's Breeze. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael Thomas from eight yards out. And the Saints are able to cash in for six. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it works very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. So this drive spans seven plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Jameis Winston and company heading back onto the field now. But Charles, it's the second quarter. Your team's losing. You're not playing well as the quarterback, but like I said, it's the second quarter, so how worried right now are you? You're concerned, but you're not panicked because you know there's still an opportunity. No one's excited about his stat line right now. One touchdown pass, okay, that's cool, but he's throwing an interception as well. Can he eliminate the mistakes and keep making the positive plays, the good plays? That's what they're looking for from him. Time to find out if he can do just that. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to look deep down the field. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept him on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Winston with a give to Martin. 
And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down, and you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. The Bucks on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. From the gun, Winston. It's caught, Humphreys. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. And he had the touchdown of the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. The play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. Throw is going to be incomplete. Kobe Flaner, the tight end, is intended target. And it's second down. Now, that incompletion gives me a chance to go in a different direction. You know, a few teams we've been talking about in the NFL that have had offensive explosions this year after struggles in the past, and one you mentioned, the Chiefs. Yeah, think about it. Kareem Hunt, the rookie out of Toledo, has been phenomenal at tailback. But Alex Smith has opened it up on offense. I'm sure the drafting of Pat Mahomes had nothing to do at all <laughs> with Alex Smith now becoming a bomber downfield. And then the Saints, we've talked about them nearly every Every week what they've done it's kind of a flip-flop of what we've seen in recent years well you start with the obligatory Drew Brees is great and he still is but they're running the ball more it's the defense has been the been the issue for them that now is actually carrying them <laughs> this four game winning streak it's been all about the defense plenty of takeaways and a lot of sacks and then the Rams oh my god the Rams well for years we always said they were good field no hit meaning their defense was terrific but they couldn't score on offense Add Sean McVay in as the new head coach, and they have opened it up in a huge way. An absolute offensive juggernaut building the league and scoring. In just two minutes time, don't forget we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry. Now the ninth year man from LSU, Thomas Morstead on to punt. Adam Humphreys deep for Tampa Bay. put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Jameis now on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's caught inside the 30. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. And even 50 yards. Well, that was a Deshaun Jackson special, wasn't it? Deep downfield for a big play. But truthfully, if he catches it short, he can turn it into a long gainer, can he? Just such a big play receiver last year. 17.9 yards per catch, and that was tied for the league lead. He's going to open up the offense in a big way in Tampa. On 
First and ten, Winston. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Tyler Davison never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, you know, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, that allows your blitzers to get there. Now a second down throw for Winston. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Bucks on third down. Just one for five to this point. This will be third and forever. Jameis to throw it. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Cameron Jordan coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it'll be fourth down. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Brian Anger now. He's been terrific so far. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. time running down they go down to a knee so it's halftime here in new orleans with the saints out in front as we send you on over to orlando where we'll check in with larry redley he's got our ea sports halftime report larry all right brandon we'll see if i can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our ea sports halftime report the saints are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters the buccaneers won't panic either they know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Midway through the first quarter, Evans got nobody around him on the catch, and it ends up working for a touchdown. The Buccaneers is up now by seven. We move late into the second. It's Drew Brees finding Michael Thomas, and it's gonna be caught for the touchdown. The lead now at six. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. 
And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. And the third quarter starts with a run by Ingram. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. On second down, here's Breeze. And he's got it over the middle. Flaner. That catch good for five. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. The Saints on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. Here it's third and two. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They try to fire up the running game with Martin. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. They run it again with Martin. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third and about seven left. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The Bucks on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and seven. To throw, Winston. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Here's Gim. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. 
Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll try to get the ground game going with Ingram. And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Second down following the run. From the gun, it's Breeze. On the check down, he finds Camara. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Breeze to throw on second down. Caught by Snead over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 yards through the air and a first down. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Now Ingram, he's been busy today. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Again, they'll run with Ingram. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Joe McCoy is always going to be linked with Indomitian Sue. They came into the NFL in the same draft class. There was a lot of debate about who was going to be the better defensive tackle. They just do it two different ways. McCoy, more movement, more elusiveness. That allowed him to make the play there for a short game. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. Taking it right down Broadway. Touchdown, New Orleans. A great play there. 40 yards. And the Saints now at six to their lead. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter. Capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. Right, 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 right. 
Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target, the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They go play action here on first down. And Winston lost the football. And this is picked up by the Saints. And that will set him up in excellent shape. First and goal at the nine-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Field comes New Orleans. This is sort of what you would call the put-away drive, is it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? They'll run here with Ingram. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, add that play to his resume reel because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big-time penetration, and throw people for losses. Ten yards still left on second down. To throw is Breeze. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Michael Thomas, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Saints take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash in for six. Coming into the year, Breeze, 465 touchdown passes, add another one to the total. You know, it's funny, I just talked with his college head coach, and he told me that when Drew was a sophomore at Purdue, they weren't sure he was truly the starter, even though he started the opening game, and he made a play early in that one. But the coach got on the headset and told the rest of the staff, well, fellas, we found our quarterback. Now we got to make sure we find the rest of our team. <laughs> Breeze hasn't looked back since. Lutz to try to add the PAT. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. Well, 
that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory excellent field position two plays later pay dirt. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You'd better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. They give to Martin. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now Winston. He sets to fire deep. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position, couldn't hold on third down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. The offense on third down tonight, it's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll run it. Here's Martin. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They run again on first down, Martin. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Not that we necessarily see this as being in the cards, but worth noting that 21 points would equal their franchise record for largest deficit overcome. Certainly plenty of work to do between now and then. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? The Bucks on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and three. Another carry now for Rodgers. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. 
three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. And off comes to Martin. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Play fake to Martin. Now Jameis. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. O.J. Howard's career numbers at Alabama are not going to blow you away considering his talent. But the national championship game against Clemson, the one they won, oh, my God, yeah. what a night he had. That's the game that I remember from his college career. Over 200 yards, two touchdowns. The big reason, if not the biggest reason, they won that football game. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Another tote for the workhorse, Martin. And down inside the 15 he goes. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. From the red zone now, Winston. He gets it to Humphreys. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard at the 11-yard line. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. And the seemingly endless drive continues. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Second down, eight. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They run. Martin looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. But he was stopped on that play. But he's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. The Bucks on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and seven. Working out of the gun, Winston. And that is incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does, 
is emboldened the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. A field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on four. Now whistles here before the snap. Look like one of the Bucks may have moved. offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is going to be incomplete. The Bucks try it on fourth down but come up empty. And the Saints will have the football back. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. game moves along. Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So it'll be first down here after the run. And a 20th carry now for Ingram. And not a whole lot doing there, so he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Bree's going to throw. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up with a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. Play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. Game offense. So that one will be accepted. Still first down. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Give him a couple on the run there. It'll be second and 13. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. 
But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. On second down, Ingram. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. The Saints on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and nine. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And a broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Brandon, unfortunately, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them, so this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They run it again with Kamara. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Good game there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay down. And not in any rush offensively. And a short gain down to about the 33. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Breeze hands to Ingram, and he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now a handoff. Here's Kamara. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if he picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. On second down, Kamara. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. Breeze on the draw against a Camara. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Oh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Ready. 
Breeze gives it up to Ingram. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. In search of eight yards on third down. They've already converted two of these on this drive. Two for two. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got to jump here. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Still third down. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Levante David able to drop him for a loss of two, and that will bring up fourth down. And they went empty backfield, and because of that, nobody was there to pick up the blitz. And you know that offenses, when they go with the empty backfield, they have different things designed on every play to try to account for things. But what people often forget, defense is audible as well. And a lot of times when they see an empty backfield, they audible right into a blitzing situation. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. His kick is good. And that will extend the lead out to 24. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. To throw is Winston. Right side caught by Jackson. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Deshaun Jackson, 75 yards. And the Bucs are able to close the gap just a bit. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they're going to go for two. It's complete, and he will get into the end zone to shave two more points off the deficit. 
Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. Two touchdowns to his credit so far. Charles, I'm curious, do these wide receivers, what are they going with each week? Is it different week to week for the goals that they personally set for themselves, do you think? I doubt that it's different from week to week. Maybe because of game plan, they know that one guy might be featured more than the other. But all in all, these guys are looking for 100 or more yards in, in receiving. But the biggest thing, getting into the end zone. And how about him? He's gotten there twice in this game. He has indeed. They go play action for Ingram. Now Breeze. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there, and a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. They'll run it now out of the gun. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact, able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is brought in at the 21. 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Deshaun Jackson getting set to go again on offense. He's north of 150 yards in this game. He's been doing his thing, hasn't he? That he has, and he's been enjoying himself. And it's the type of game that you get locked into a pretty good groove. May not be record-shattering, but it's the type of game that if you accumulate that throughout a season, you can be one of the top receivers in the game. See how much they incorporate him here on this drive. down, Winston. And now another turnover as this one's intercepted. Picked off by Ken Crowley. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. And that one will pretty much erase any hopes of a fourth quarter comeback. With emphasis, interception, return for touchdown. Door closed, locked, reinforced. A 
Galazzo looked to add the extra point. And that PAT pushes the lead up to 23 now. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Back to it after the pick six. Winston. He's got his tight end over the middle. O.J. Howard. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? So the offense has it first and ten. From the gun, Winston. His throw incomplete. Winston gives to Martin on the draw. Strong run, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. The Bucks on third down. They're hitting at just 30 percent, three for ten. This is third and nine. From the shotgun, it's Winston. Open man is Godwood, it's complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. It goes for a gain of 10 and it's a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So here we go, first and 10 now. Winston throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Deshaun Jackson that time. And now it's second down. 
One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the Ready? high throw. Luckily, Ready? fell incomplete. Throwing again, Winston on second and ten. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. So this is what happens when you throw interceptions. That confident veneer that you have gets chipped away a little bit. Maybe a little bit gun-shy throwing it around. Yeah, under-throwing him there, and you're right. Those interceptions may be in the back of his mind. On third down, Winston. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Incomplete. He had his hands on it but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's Brian Anger now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. Hard to call this guy a game manager, but that's really all he's needed to do. The running game, fantastic. And they've actually put themselves in a spot where they're able to close the game out, doing what you would want to do in this situation anyway, run the football. But they don't have to ramp up into it. They're already there. They've been establishing it the entire game. Now they can keep that running theme and get into the locker room with a win. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line, and I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call timeout. Run the football. <laughs> we got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Second down following the run. Ingram again. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Again, idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Well, I know it points to this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people who really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14-11 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. 
I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.